Hi, welcome to my video. In it, I'm going to show you how Smart DNS works. Now, a lot of people might, you might have heard the name or come across it online, but Smart DNS is uh, an innovative new system um, which allows you to access websites that are normally blocked. Um, this is usually based on your location. So, for instance, I'm in Britain and I'm unable to access most of the American media sites. Uh, things like Hulu, ABC, NBC. I can't access a lot of the Canadian, Australian, French, German websites either. Um, the big media sites tend to restrict it to the, the, their own citizens, if you like. Okay, well, the traditional way of bypassing this, and there is a way of bypassing these, is to use proxies and VPNs, which all work fine. <coughs> However, um, there are two slight drawbacks. The first is you need to route all your... Um, internet traffic through that intermediate server so you to when i want to watch uh, american tv or something like hulu i'd have to route it through uh, an american vpn server um that obviously can add adds another step on your journey so it can add some it can slow down your connection depending on the speed of the vpn server the other difficulty is the vpn is easy to set up reasonably well on uh, a pc you start getting into things like tablets and um, TVs and routers and stuff, it gets a lot more complicated and sometimes it's very difficult indeed. Um, Smart DNS is kind of a combination of these solutions. What it does is actually filters the individual parts of the traffic that look at your location. So when the video starts streaming from a site like Hulu, it's going direct or direct. What it's doing is fooling the web server um, into your real location at the beginning. Okay, it's probably easier to demonstrate. First of all, let me show you what happens when I try and access something on um, Hulu. It's something called the Colbert Report. Uh, this is what happens, and this is what happens to you if you're in outside America. We're sorry, currently our video library can only be streamed within the United States. Okay, it's so looked up my IP address blocked me because I'm in the UK. Let me close that. Right, what I'm going to show you is how to set up Smart DNS to get past this. It's quite easy to do. Uh, I'm on Windows 7. Whatever device you're doing, and, I'm, and I mean any device, whether it's a games console, we're looking for the TCP IP settings, okay? This is Windows 7. Windows 8 is very similar if you use this mode, but it's, it also works on the Mac or Windows XP, Vista, you name it. Uh, right here I go to local area connection I'm looking for this little box here um, local connection status properties then I'm clicking down and finding TCP IP v4 so I'm looking for the properties here and here's my internet properties now this is all internal stuff the top here I'm using a static uh, an internal set address if you like yours could well be and pro probably is obtain an IP address automatically in that case you'll get it from the router or Wi-Fi access point whatever you're connecting <coughs> this is not your external IP address this is your internal one okay you see this goes to my default gateway which is my router okay don't need to touch that leave all that alone um, what you do need to touch is to make sure that it uses a smart DNS server, okay? So if you've got an account with a smart DNS provider, um, there's a link in my uh, description below and on the screen of the one I use. Um, if you want to, um, you've, you've got to set up the account first, uh, otherwise you won't be able to use it. You can't just put in the address. Okay, I'm going to put in the address because I have an account. Um, the company I use has actually got a two-week free trial at the moment, so it's worth trying that. Uh, because you can get it up and running and use it for a fortnight and see if it's worth paying. It doesn't cost an awful lot. So I put the Smart DNS server in there. Okay, close, close, close. Um, right, you probably don't need to do this. And maybe I don't need to do it as well, but sometimes it gets a bit confused with DNS requests um, after you go to a, a different site again. So I'm just going to flush the DNS cache. Um, you shouldn't need to do that. 
and I'm going to go back to Hulu. Okay, so remember before I was blocked from, let's go to the same thing, Colbert. Now Smart DNS is enabled, okay? So we're going to click on this thing that I was previously blocked. And you can see it now works perfectly. Not only does it work perfectly, I am now unrestricted to all the big media sites, not just Hulu. I can go to ABC, NBC in America. I can switch to a Canadian CTV channel and watch that as if I was a Canadian. I can also go to um, the BBC or any of the UK TV stations. I don't need to do anything else. That DNS setting, once enabled, will work for everything on this PC, okay? It detects and basically tells the server what it needs to see. So if, if, you're, um, if it's in America, it'll pretend you're in America. If it's in the UK, it'll pretend you're in the UK. It all works seamlessly. You don't need to switch to different countries like you do with a VPN or a proxy. It just works out of the box. And of course, it works faster than most VPNs because you're basically just streaming direct to the server. The one drawback with Smart DNS, and it's worth mentioning this, is that you have to register your IP address with a service for it to work. So if your IP address changes a lot, every time it changes, you need to go to back to the Smart DNS website and reauthorize it. So mine changes once every week or two, so it takes 30 seconds to go and reauthorize it, but if yours changed a lot more, it could be a real pain. So it's worth thinking about that. Right, I'll finish that video now. I hope that's explained something about how Smart DNS works. Okay, and thank you for watching.